Now, I've already started on the airframe for this rocket, and this is a two inch uh, PVC, uh, thin walled PVC. Hopefully, it'll be able to take the heat without melting. I find phenolic or cardboard to work very well, but uh, hopefully, this will endure the heat and not melt the airframe. We're going to give it a shot. Hey, we're just having fun here. So, I've already put the fins on this airframe. And how I got the fins on and how I did it evenly was I took some computer paper, wrapped it around the airframe, then drew the line where that connects, and in this side here, I measured the distance, which would eventually be the circumference of the airframe, and it turned out to be 190 millimeters divided by 3 is about 63. So I wrapped the, after I divided that into three equal sections, I just put a little mark where those three sections were and then I wrapped it around the airframe again and then drew a line where those three marks were on both ends then I put the airframe into a door frame or use a square or something and just connect the, do connect the dots there so you got a straight line three straight lines on the airframe uh, pretty fairly evenly separated and then all I did was I, I took some chipboard or plywood this is, I think, an eighth of an inch. You can get some quarter-inch plywood from a craft shop like Michael's. And uh, I really just eyeballed it. Made sure that using super glue, CA glue, uh, put a bead on the airframe and then just put the wood down. Make sure you get it on straight. I eyeballed it. Put it on the right or the left side of your line, not right on top, because then you have to sort of eyeball the middle of the wood. And that's harder, but if you put it right along the line, it's really easy to see. And I basically just eyeballed it to make sure that it's straight up and down. And uh, if you put that on with super glue, it 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 will almost not. It, it'll be almost impossible to remove it. I have had airframes crash into the ground and where the the PVC sheared before the wood came off the airframe. So uh, if you eyeball it very well, you should be able to get a fairly straight fin configuration. It's not that hard to do. And since the glue dries real quick, you just work, hold it a few seconds, and it, it, it'll set up. And then I put beads on there to fill in the fillets. Nothing fancy. This is a simple. The airframe is the simplest part of the whole rocket for making something uh, a simple rocket like this. But I forgot to mention that what I always do is I choose an airframe based on the motor I'm going to use or the size of the PVC pipe I'm going to use for a motor. And I make sure I find something because I use the, the, the coupler, the end, I don't know what, what you call this particular end. I'm in Thailand, it's a little different than America, but they have these in white. Uh, not quite the same, a little shorter, but they'll work. Uh, I've launched some rockets in America using the same type of stuff. Uh, it's, got, it's got threads on the inside, and that really helps hold the nozzle in. But I always make sure, I choose my uh, airframe based on how easily, or how good, the motor's going to fit. So I don't really to keep that in. What I may do is just add a little tape or put some tape around the outside or put tape on the inside to keep it in. But uh, I keep things real simple. I don't want to have to make a motor mount for my rocket if I don't have to. So that'll work. <laughs> so that's basically how I choose my airframes. In America, I used a one and a half inch tube, paper tube, at the post office, you can buy it at the post office, and I used a, if I'm not mistaken, a one and a quarter inch motor. Fits right in a one and a half inch tube from the post office, perfect. And so I was able to just butt the motor up inside there. So, uh, very simple. Now, I'm going to show you today how I make nose cones uh, for the same tube. Some tubes, you, some sizes, or most sizes, if you don't buy a commercial rocket tube, you're not going to get a commercial nose cone to fit. So uh, I have to make my own nose cone for this particular PVC tube. And I've shown in the past how to do that, but we'll just go ahead in the detail today. Uh, hopefully not too quick. Hopefully you guys can catch it, uh, what I'm doing. But what I do, instead of dividing into three, like for the fin end, I divide into six on this side. And I choose, I, I mark a line to how, how long I want my nose cone. I divide this section in the 6 and then this section in the 12 on the other end. Just put little marks, 6 and 12. And then from, from the 6 I draw to the 12 in the middle. So what you get here is 6 crown points, as you can see. And what I use is a straight edge. In, in my case I use excuse me, a hacksaw blade. 
and a marker, and I just held it there. It'd be good if you can get someone to hold the end here for, for you, and you can go to your other dot and then just draw a line. It doesn't take very long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Dremel tool or an angle grinder, and I'm going to cut those crowns out. But uh, since I've had some experience doing this, I'm actually going to do something a little different. I'm going to sort of draw these and make them a little rounded so it fills the gap in a little more uh, that I don't have to feel so much epoxy. And you'll see what I mean after I draw this. 